I close my eyes, concentrating on breathing, just staying centered with your breathing. So when a thought comes to mind, you acknowledge it and you let it go and you come back to the fact that you're breathing. It's lovely. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Just slow breathing for however long you feel like you need, grounding yourself, calming down if you're panicking about anything. I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder, so MDD, along with general anxiety disorder. There's never really a want to give up completely. It's more just a fear of what's gonna happen next or how can I possibly impact my own future, the future of others in a positive way when life is so unpredictable. We know that 44% of our freshmen at this university come with mental health diagnosis. And my team is looking at things, how to do this differently than before. What are we missing with these um, youth that aren't responding to standard treatments? What's different about their neurobiology? What Dr. Cullen and others in our Department of Psychiatry do is absolutely revolutionary. They are changing how we look at this by going after the source of the problem. We know now there are certain areas of the brain that are activated during negative emotion feelings, for example, and also in other parts of the brain that are involved in regulating our emotions. Brains change during our lifetime. Brains of an adolescent changes quite a bit. So it's an opportunity to intervene in a way that can rebuild some of the connections that we have in the brain. Over time, we expect that mindful breathing would have impacts on some of these neural networks that would be positive for a person's mental health. And then we're looking to combine it with neuromodulation, so brain stimulation, to see if we can augment the effects of that mindful breathing. With mindful breathing, they can learn to use their breath as a focus for the present, because often with depression, um, the tendency is to ruminate about past events or about the future. I see it everywhere. Everyone has something. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're a student or if you're a parent or a billionaire. Everyone has experienced something like it at some point in their lives. It isn't something to be ashamed of because it's normal. You are not your depression. You are not your anxiety. They're things that you deal with, um, but they're not you. They don't define you. Somebody like Dr. Cullen, who has looked at the sources of the problem as well as ways to intervene in a different way that we used to do, is exactly the person that can change life of somebody like Natalie. Because there's no health without mental health. I have that experience of being there for somebody, staying with them, listening to them, making them feel heard, trying to inspire hope and I get to see the recovery. I get to be there when they get better. So I do have hope. I think that the mindful breathing had an impact on me, a positive impact, because I've noticed myself being less anxious in everyday activities, taking more time to appreciate little things in my life. 